It's not really possible to produce the ultimate pot in one go. Each pot that you throw is a development of the one that came before it. Each one is an experiment. You're trying to push the barriers out a little bit, refine the shape. I use shapes that are used by potters all over the world. Shapes that, that occur over and over again, and each time we make it, it's new and different. As you work, as you throw this board of pots, your manual skills improve, the form improves, the liveliness of the pot, the vitality in the pot, the life of the pot, improves, they become more and more spontaneous so that by the end of the day, after throwing 20, 30 pieces, you're producing a pot which is much better than the first ones that you made. The clay dictates the various stages so that when you're making one of these, these dishes, I have to throw it and then I have to let it dry for a bit and then trim it and then put on the handles and let it dry for a bit more and then put on the slip and let it dry for a bit more and then fire it. And that produces its own discipline. It does mean that you have to get up and you have to be in the pottery every day. And I enjoy being in the pottery every day. Barley in this field here has just been harvested. I've put this corn motif on the, on the rim of the pot. And I'm also conscious it's going to be used for pie, which almost always has some farinaceous um, aspect to it. I dig clay which I mix with wood ash and straw ash and I burn rhododendron and birch in the boiler that heats our house and produce single species ash and make glazes out of those. Once I set up here the decoration definitely took second place, it just became a texture just added to the texture of the pot, but the form always predominated. I think it says, this is made for you by another person. It's not made by a machine. I fire the kiln maybe every two months, so that's quite a long cycle. First of all, I make big pots, then I make small pots, and at the end of the two months I have enough pots to, to fill the kiln. This is the next biggest. I suppose in theory you should have on the other is used to fire the pots comes from within half a mile of, of the pottery. So I'm very lucky. As time goes on, you benefit from the disasters that you experience. So you do become more and more precise in the way that you fire the kiln. So that I don't just chuck in wood and hope for the best anymore. I'm very careful now. I am in control. 
control of the kiln for the whole for the whole 28 hours. Although I don't put all the wood in myself, I have friends who help. Chance still plays an enormous part. I never know really what's going to happen. We're not really masters of the kiln. The kiln is the master. living thing. It breathes in and breathes out. So you stoke it and it goes into reduction. Lots of flame comes out of the chimney. And then as the fuel gets burnt up, the flame in the chimney dies down. It goes into oxidation and the temperature increases until you run out of fuel and then the temperature starts to drop again so you so you stoke. So you have to get into into the rhythm set by the kiln. The kiln controls you more than you control the kiln. And we don't stop, no, it's 28 hours of solid solid work. These are the colours that I see in the Scottish landscape, what appear to be browns. They're not really just browns, they're greens and yellows and they're rich colours. You can see them if you look at bracken in the autumn when the bracken is just changing colours. It, it, it's, it's brown and green. I do take my inspiration from the Scottish landscape and that's what allows me to carry on making Pots, which are quite quiet and where I use a lot of earth colours. It takes a long time for me to unpack my kiln. It's because I have to look at every single part that comes out.
interested in having a quality of humanity in my work. So that in, rather than expressing what is special and different about me, I would like it to express what is the same about me as everybody else. All my pots, well most of the pots I make are for use and that is important that I think people, a lot of people find it easier to relate to art that is useful. I think that making the crumble in the dish means that you become part of the making process. I buy my clay from a man in Cornwall and I turn it into a baking dish and I dig clay down at Spiny and make this glaze. Then we fire this in the wood kiln and I have help to do that and then somebody else makes the crumble and so they become part of that team as well and we end up with a, a beautiful baking dish full of delicious crumble and that's the real work of art. I like to think that the best of my parts have a message for the person that uses them. They talk of humanity, that they talk of warmth and friendliness. I hope that the person who uses them knows that they've been made by another human being with love in their heart.